Thank you for inviting me down to speak. I always love coming to Lacknog. Uh, the Lacknick Lacknog group are always doing very, very interesting stuff. And it's a vibrant community. I think it's a really important part of the internet uh, overall. Um, I'm Russ White. You can see there I'm now at LinkedIn. If you didn't know that already, I spent 16 years at Cisco, a couple of years at VeriSign Labs, and a couple of years at Ericsson, and I'm now at LinkedIn on the network architecture team, where I'm working on basically anything LinkedIn works on. Um, yes, we've been bought by Microsoft. No, I don't know what that means at this point, other than we're keeping our own data centers. I'll tell you a secret. We have better data centers than Microsoft does. Shh. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Um, our data centers are fantastic. Our data center team is fantastic. Um, so this is a small presentation that I have done in different places. I've reformatted a bit for here. And if I talk too fast or if you have questions, please, you know, feel free to jump up and down, scream, do whatever. Um, interruptions don't really bother me. What actually bothers me more is that you've put me on a podium and I can't walk around and I don't have a microphone and I'm like stuck. I feel like I'm nailed to the floor here. All right, so this is about network uh, engineer versus complexity. You know, the thing is, is that we deal a lot as network engineers with complexity. And I've spent about the last three to four years looking at complexity theory, wrote an entire book on it, and trying to figure out a little bit about how we can stop the complexity stuff that we deal with. Complexity is so, well, our networks are so complex and everything is so difficult. And um, it's kind of crazy. We keep building all this complex stuff and doing all these very complex things. And when I came to LinkedIn, uh, one thing that I noticed is that at the hyperscale web scale environment, uh, everything is about simplification. I want to reduce the, sim uh, the complexity of everything to the minimum possible. And um, you know, we don't do overlays. We only do layer three routing. We do containers. We don't do um, any sort of VXLAN or anything on top. Uh, you know, we're talking about putting MPLS on our fabric. We don't have MPLS there today. But everything is very, very simple and very, very, uh, very, very concerned with keeping things simple. But here's the thing, right? We always talk about this. We walk around and we say, well, that network is too complex. It's not elegant. It's um, undeployable. It won't scale. But we really don't define these terms in any way that we can m make action or do something actionable on it or, or, or take action on it in some way. We just kind of talk about these terms and off we go and, and we say these things without thinking through what, uh, what they actually mean. So what this presentation is, is instead of defining what they are, I'm going to try to think more about what actions you can take about complexity. If you're curious about how I define these things a little bit, uh, you might want to look back at some Nanoc presentations I've done over the last couple of years and um, Cisco Live and some other places I've talked about this stuff and tried to do a little bit better at defining complexity, understanding complexity. For today, I'm just going to focus on what can I do about it. Okay, so first of all, you can't solve complexity. If anyone tells you they can solve complexity, they're lying. It's not possible. Essentially, complexity is a, 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 an artifact of doing hard things or solving hard problems. Uh, there's no way that you're going to get around having a complex solution. If you have a hard problem, you're going to have a complex solution. That's just the way it is. Um, so here's a quote from a paper by Myers. It's actually in very light gray down there if you look for it, if you see the slides. Um, in our view, however, complexity is most succinctly discussed in terms of functionality and its robustness. Specifically, we argue that complexity in highly organized systems are primarily primarily rises from design strategies intended to create robustness to uncertainty. We all have uncertainty in our networks. Hence, we all design complexity into our networks. I'll give you some examples. Well, I actually have examples later, but think about fast reroute. Fast reroute can be very complex. Traffic engineering can be very complex, but it's, it's a reaction to robustness problems. So if you can't solve complexity, then what do we do? Do we just um, put up the black flag and say, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. It's too late. It's too bad. We just have to deal with complexity. Um, I don't think that's the right answer. Again, you know, I live in the hyperscale environment now, the web scale environment. And we're not doing that. We're trying to figure out how to manage this stuff and how to make it. So what's my goal? My goal is to create a mental model, 
Okay, complexity is not solvable. I can't solve it. There's no silver bullet. There's nothing I can do to stop things from being complex. But what I can do is I can build a mental model that helps me understand complex systems quickly. And also on top of that, it also helps me to manage the complexity or to see places where the complexity is unnecessary. So let's talk about why. Um, there's gonna be three questions I'm gonna ask throughout this. The first is why. And the second is what, and the third is how. That may sound really, really simple and stupid, and it is. But really, I think to get to the bottom of complexity and manage it, you have to get to the very basic questions, and you have to ask very basic things. So let's talk about why. Why, as a question, acts as an abstractor. So one of the great skills a network engineer needs to have to survive in the networking industry is the ability to abstract things. So what is aggregation of routes? It's abstraction. What is modularization of a network? It's abstraction. All of these things are abstractions. What's the OSI model? It's an abstraction of how packets are forwarded. Um, not that I teach the OSI model anymore. As far as I'm concerned, I kind of have this feeling about the OSI model that uh, it's old and should be done with. But anyway, X is an abstraction. The second thing is, is it closes off rabbit trails. So if you've ever been out in the woods and you're hunting for something or you're walking around and you see a little rabbit run across and your dog chases the rabbit, follows the rabbit trail. And this is quite what happens a lot to us in, uh, in our network engineering lives is that we're wandering around working on something very important and then a shiny thing comes along and we all chase it. Or a squirrel, depending on which movie you happen to watch. Um, or a red herring. Uh, depending on your perspective, but that's what it is. We have this major problem with rabbit trails. So the why question acts as a way to close off those rabbit trails, keep me focused on the problem I have at hand. It also connects the technical to the business. If I can't answer why something is going on, then I probably am not doing a good job for the business. So now next, let's talk about what. You'll get the uh, dragon in just a minute when I get there. So what, like, uh, what routing protocols are being used here? What routing protocols do I need to use? What features, what topology? Um, these are all good questions, but they don't actually get at complexity. Complexity is more about trade-offs. So I can ask these questions like which routing protocol and which features am I using and which topology am I using, but that doesn't really give me a sense of what the complexity of the system looks like. Um, so this is kind of uh, part of the problem. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm asking good questions to the network engineer, but I'm not getting at complexity. So what I need to ask instead are things like, what are the trade-offs? What trade-offs have I made in designing the system this way? And I have a pretty classic saying that I use all the time now. Uh, if you haven't found the trade-offs, you haven't looked hard enough. And what, what, so what is complex about this system and what trade-off choices have I made? So. Let's go back to complexity for a second and figure out, okay, what, how can I understand complexity? I'm gonna use a little process here, and I'm gonna use some short case studies that imply to me this concept of the trade-offs in complexity, and then I'm gonna to try to build a model from these trade-offs or from these, um, these short case studies. So this, the case studies I'm gonna use are Department of Defense model, the recursive internet architecture model, IP fast reroute. So a lot of people think that TCP IP came out of the OSI model, it did not. The OSI model was actually pushed onto TCP IP after the fact, which is why you probably have so many problems trying to figure out like what layer IP fits in, not IP fits in, but where BGP fits and things like that. In the DOD model, the D US Department of Defense model, there were actually only four layers. These four layers are application, transport, internet, and link. This is actually the model on which TCP IP was built. And this model asks a couple of questions. It asks things like, how can state be divided up? So in the TCP IP, or in the DOD model, I have state at the link level, I have state at the internet level, I have state at the transport level, I have state at the application level. And these are the things I care about. Then I care about something like, what type of information needs to be moved from component to component in this system to move information from the application to the application. So this is not only between the layers, so what information am I carrying from the link to the internet, but what am I carrying between the internet layer running on two separate boxes that actually what information is being transferred between those boxes. 
So if I think about it, what I'm asking is things like, what state is contained here? How much state is contained here? How fast does this state change? What am I optimizing by splitting this state up? What are my trade-offs in this area? What's the goal of breaking this up into multiple subsystems? What state is shared here? How much does the internal state interface between these components? How much state does the links layer transfer or carry to the internet layer? How much information does the internet layer carry to the transport layer? So I can put this more simply and call it state optimization and surface. I can say there are three things that I'm looking at, state, optimization, and surface. What, what is my state? What is my optimization? How am I optimizing that state? And how much interaction do I have between the components, which is what I call surface. So let's look at the recursive internet model. This might be new to you. You can look it up on the internet if you want to. Um, this is a thing from John Day. Uh, and there's, there's an actual book about this that at least partially describes this. And there's a lot of documentation on the internet that you can find at the RINA, um information on those websites. So this is called recursive internet architecture. Now very much like the DOD model I just showed you, I'm still asking the same sorts of questions. What type of processing needs to take place on the information to transmit stuff from application to application. So in the RINO model, I'm actually identifying four processes. I transport data, I multiplex data, I have um, error handling, and I have flow control. And I group these into complementary layers, and then I actually pile those layers on top of each other. Ethernet represents one set of layers, IP TCP represents another set, HTML and et cetera represents a third set of layers or pairs of layers so that you actually get a better sense of how the work is done inside of these. Okay, so who needs to do this work? The interface, the host, the application, the network device, what am, who's doing the work? So again, I'm gonna ask, what state is required here? How much? How fast does it change? What am I optimizing by splitting the state up? What state is shared between layers and between things going on? And guess what? I come back to the same thing. I have state, optimization, and surface. What's my state? Where am I trading the state off? How am I containing it? And what am I, what am I trading off in terms of optimization? And then I have surface. How do the different components interact? What information is being transferred between those components? And how far throughout the network? So let's look at a control plane example. So. Here, I have A, router A down here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, yes, uh, using the path through B to reach DB801-64. The path through C is blocked by the control plane. It's not a loop-free path according to the control plane. We'd like to be able to use this path, so what do we do? We actually build a loop-free alternate. So I haven't gone into a Complex things here are very hard solutions, just even the simple loop-free alternate, not remote loop-free alternate, not TEFR or anything like that. C can actually compute, or A can actually compute the cost from C to determine from C's perspective. So it can determine if the traffic sent to C will be looped back to A itself. This is just a loop-free alternate. If not, then A can install the path through C as a backup. So again, I can ask the same sorts of questions, right? How much state am I adding to the control plane by doing this alternate calculation? Well, A needs to know what C's database looks like. Just so happens in link state protocols, that's not a problem because A already knows this. Unless, of course, you're talking about a flooding domain boundary. Don't know why you would do flooding domain boundaries anymore, but uh, in case you are. How often does this state change? Right? How often does C's view of the network change? How do I find out about it? How much faster will the network converge with an LFA? This is an optimization question, right? I'm, get, I'm using a little more processing. I'm adding a little more state to the network in some way, but I'm optimizing by converging faster. And do other routers in the network need to react to the state in the control plane? So this is essentially a surface question. So again, I come back to the same thing. I have state. I have optimization, which is a set of trade-offs, and I have a surface. I have interaction between things. Yes. A little slower. I'm sorry. A little slower, yes. Yes, I do speak too fast. My record is 96 slides in 15 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. <laughs> 
and I have an hour. So, yes. No, actually, I, was, I took over for a speaker at Cisco Live. I walked into the room, and the speaker's slides had nothing but network diagrams on them. No text. I had no idea what I was supposed to talk about. So, it was entertaining. Anyway, so here are some other examples of state optimization and surface you might run across. Um, so, state, the number of routes carried in a routing protocol is a state, the amount of state you're carrying, right? How many routes am I literally carrying in the routing protocol? Um, am I carrying 100,000 routes, 200,000 routes, 250, whatever the case might be. How fast is reachability and topology information changing? And if you think about this, this is where you get into feedback loops and you get into how a network fails to converge. Um, you know, des destination host, destination service, and hello transmit interval, things like this. So optimization, questions I can ask about is um, convergence speed. How fast does my network converge versus how much state I'm carrying in the routing protocol? The shortest path versus the um, path actually taken. This is something you might call stretch, and it's something I relate to policy. So in my view, anything that takes the traffic off of the shortest path is actually policy. So anything that increases stretch is policy. So stretch defines your stretch. You just take the longest path or the current path versus the shortest path in the network. And this is pretty ambiguous, I know, but that gives you your stretch. So um, optimization is things like applying your filters as close to the source as possible, right? I want to not carry, how's this optimization? Because I do not want to carry traffic through the network that's ultimately going to be dropped. Right? I don't want to bring traffic all the way through my data center fabric, have it land on a host, and have that host have an IP filter set up that drops the traffic. I just wasted a lot of bandwidth carrying it across my network, through my data center fabric, switching it, slowing down other traffic through serialization delays and queuing, and then dropping it at the actual host. The amount of configuration required to implement. I don't know. I think when I was on the way here, they told me it was 2016. I think, that's, I think that's right. And yet, in 2016, we are still manually configuring an awful lot of stuff on our networks. But it seems kind of crazy to me how much manual configuration we do. And even, even if you automated how much configuration there is to do. So that's another entire talk I could probably give. But amount of configuration required to implement. This is an issue of optimization. Can I configure something that only takes me five lines of configuration to configure instead of 10 or 15? And then the distance between the information source and the control point. If you do any work in network engineering, you should know something about the CAP theorem, um, which is about consistency, um, availability, and partitionability on a database. And so there's this concept called subsidiarity that is actually comes out of my philosophical side. I'm getting a PhD in philosophy, so I'm learning all these cool philosophy terms that I get to throw at you on, um, on a Tuesday morning and make you go to sleep. But anyway, we, uh, yeah, so there's this concept called subsidiarity, which is I want to bring the information as close to the point where the, or bring the decision as close to the information where the information is as I can. So surface thoughts, um, configuration, human to machine interface, two control planes interacting in a single network. When you run BGP on top of IS to IS, all right, does anybody here run OSPF? No, don't raise your hands. Don't embarrass yourselves. Sorry. <laughs> so if you run BGP on top of IS to IS, um, they interact, right? You have this whole concept of wait for BGP in ISIS. That's an interaction surface. The API between configuration system and network devices. So if you have a Yang model or a Ansible or something like this, you have an interaction surface there. Two routers exchanging routing information. This is actually an interaction surface. Um, two data planes interacting on the same physical topology. So these are all different examples of the same sorts of things we just outlined. So I'm going to call this the model a complexity model. That's what I call this, is the complexity model. I say that there are three points to complexity. There's state optimization and surface, or the SOS model. So let's go back to this what. 
three questions, state, optimization, and, and surface. If you'll notice, three-way choices are very, very common in our world, okay? If you go to your car mechanic and you say, I want my car fixed, and I want it fixed with the highest quality parts, and I want it to be done cheap, and I want it tomorrow, you're probably going to be laughed at. Right? That's typically what happens. So there are a lot of three-way choices in the world. Cap theorem I just mentioned is another one. I would say, I argue that network complexity is another one of these three-way choices. You can choose two of the three. You can never choose all three. You can try to balance between them. So I would argue that state, surface, and optimization are a three-way choice. The more you optimize, the less optimized your state and your surface are, or the, the more state and the more surfaces you have. And if you want to reduce your state, you're reducing your optimization while increasing your surface interactions. Okay. So the example of this, perhaps the simplest example of this is going to be aggregation. So in aggregation, what do I do? I actually manually configure something to reduce the amount of state in my network, but I'm also reducing the, path, the optimality of the path through the network. So that is it's probably a prime example of this trade-off. So another way of looking at it is there is a plane of the possible. And I can go anywhere on this plane if possible I want to. There's state optimization and surface, and as I move towards one,